Uh, good afternoon now. What, uh, what we're going to do is we have a series of, of, yeah, it is now finally, good afternoon. Uh, we have a series of questions that we're going to ask you. And I know that, and I think it's similar to what you went through before as uh, on the uh, Arts, or the, um, um, Arts Commission. And um, you'll have about 10 minutes to answer those questions. So use that time wisely. And um, we'll start with. Uh, do, do I not also have time just as a, uh, to speak or only answer questions? I thought I had time to. Yeah, I think your last question sure. will give you that. Within the 10 minutes. Okay, so I slipped so the, la the, la the last question is tell us what we didn't ask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, that's a good and, and the first one kind of gives you some time to speak, too, because that's tell us why you're interested. Okay, all right, good. I'll, I'll slip the details in there. There you, you go. Okay, so uh, I said the first uh, question is uh, we know that you've been on before, but not all of the council members have had an opportunity to. I uh, know your your background and your history and stuff. So if you could tell us what you're, why you're interested in being on the Arts Commission. Uh, well, I'm interested because I'd like to continue working on the Arts Commission as I have for the last four years. And I've been lucky enough to be the chair of the Arts Commission for the last two years. Uh, I've been working in arts my entire life, including many years in the fashion photography business, working all over the world. I also had a long and successful career producing large fashion shows in Europe where I lived for 16 years. And in New York City, I worked for the New York Collections. So I have a long background in the fashion industry. And for the last 12 years, I've been a successful photographer based first in Florida, then in Los Angeles, and for the last five years in the Coachella Valley. I work all over the Coachella Valley Several times a month, I'm on the road working in San Diego, Los Angeles, Beverly Hills for, for various regular clients. I also work in Europe and in New York. Um, why I'm interested? Well, I guess I already said it. You know, I'm very proud of the uh, accomplishments that our commission has made these last years, and I'm very excited about the future. We have many wonderful projects under discussion and in planning and I hope to be able to continue my work with and for the commission and for all 56,000 of, citizens of Cathedral City. And I sincerely hope you will consider my reapplication favorably. That got me through a lot of it. Got you through a lot of it. Uh, and, and I know that one of the questions that uh, Councilman Carnavali is gonna ask is kind of a little bit about some of your experience. Well, actually, I think well, he, just, he covered he it. So covered yeah, everything. Just, <laughs> that's something different. I'm gonna pass. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, let's see, what else can I say about my experience then, just to go along with that. Uh, I have worked in the arts pretty much my entire adult lifetime. Um, I've always been a freelance person, so I have a sort of unique spin on things. I've never really been an employee. I've never worked in the corporate world. I've never really worked in an office regularly. Um, but I've just been out in the world uh, experiencing and uh, living an artful life. Tell us about your philosophy regarding the role of public art in a community, and should art be controversial in a public setting? Good one. Um, my philosophy of art in public places, because of course that's exactly what uh, our commission is involved in, is to try to bring art visible to a public who most often doesn't see it very much, especially in a city like ours. We do not have a museum as some of the other uh, cities do in the valley. So I would venture to guess that the public art that we place around the city might very well be the only art that a lot of our citizens see. So I'd love to get more of it out there, uh, you know, in front of them. As to controversial art, I think that's sometimes acceptable, of course, because art should be challenging sometimes. It should challenge the viewer or the experiencer of the art to think new things and imagine new things, especially our youth. Okay. I mean, uh, Captain? Hi, Jim. Hi. Um, Arts commissioners uh, have to make recommendations to the council on the purchase of quality public art pieces, but also have to stay within a fairly restrictive budget. 
what are your ideas on how to reconcile these competing priorities? Uh, that's a good question, too, because as you all know, of course, our economy uh, went south, as uh, pretty much all the cities in the Valley did uh, just a few years back, and we've begun to recover, but still, our city does not have the development funds that some of the others do. I recently had a meeting with uh, some of the arts people from Palm Desert and from Indio. We're planning to uh, convene a uh, one-day symposium of all the arts people on commissions of all the cities of the entire valley, and we're working on that for next year. But anyway, I was uh, amazed to find out that the city of Indio has $1.2 million in their art fund. So I had art fund envy. I also had staff envy because the city of Palm Desert has three dedicated staff people, two part-time and one full-time, who just work on arts. So I had staff envy. So we don't have that much money. We have currently about $200,000 in our fund. So we have to be careful with that money, and we are uh, appointed by you to be stewards for that money and to make the most of it. And I think that in the past few years on the Arts Commission, we've gotten very creative in how to get more public art out there, different kinds of public art, and to do so as inexpensively as possible to hold on to our funds. We've done that with the uh, Ramon Road project is a good, a good example because the pedestals that were placed there for future sculptures, two were already in place, more are to come. Those pedestals were folded into the, the budget for the road work and the median work, so we didn't have to pay for those bases, we just have to pay for installation. Uh, we also got a major donation of five spectacular sculpture, sculpture, sculptures excuse me, from the sculptor Simi Daba and those were entirely donated to us. So all we had to pay for was picking them up in Joshua Tree and eventually installing them. So um, my ideas on how to do that with these compromises that we have and not a lot of developer, de developer fees coming in is to be creative, to come up with new ideas. We also have the mobile app, which I explained to you last weekend which is very inexpensive, but that's a new way to get what we have in our public art collection before the youth of our city, because they're all used to being on their phones and mapping things and finding things, and now we're going to give them an opportunity to you know, go around and check out your own public art that you own. Also, public outreach is another thing that's very big for me, and community outreach, I call it. And we're going to try to be out there and have a physical presence more out in the city so that they can meet us, the arts commissioners, and know what we do. And I'd also like, it's very important for them to know where the money comes from too. Because a lot of them think it comes from their taxes, but it does not. So they own the art, but they don't pay for it. Thanks. Mr. Aguilar? It is uh, likely that you and your fellow commissioners may not always agree mm -hmm. <laughs> on what type of art uh, we may need in the city or on the merits of a particular artist or on a particular piece to recommend uh, to the city council and the community. So how would you typically resolve those kinds of disagreements? That's difficult because art is, you know, they, you know, what's the phrase? Art is in the eye of the beholder. So, um, but when we have arts people on the commission who have a profound knowledge of the arts, experience in the arts, at least then, then we can influence the discourse in discussing who the artists are. I know that a lot of people on the commission, uh, we've had a lot of talks about this before, about trying to get local artists as much as possible. And we have done so. We have, you know, so many of the pieces in our collection were done by local artists. But it can't be only a local artist. We can't tie ourselves down to that. Art is universal. We have to be open to art from many places, many different types of artists artists from uh, minority communities. Um, but the, it, it's all a matter of give and take and working together on the commission, okay? We're seven people. Everybody has to work together. We have to work as a team. We have to get along with each other. And we have to discuss it. So people will come up with the, an idea for an art piece. And if four of the other people on the commission don't think that that's a proper way for us to spend our funds or they don't think that aesthetically that's a proper choice, then that piece won't, that suggestion won't go anywhere. 
but we'll all discuss it amicably. You know, if I continue to be chair of the Arts Commission, if I'm reappointed, if I'm reelected as chair, I will do my utmost to see that everybody gets along and try to just guide that discourse and see where we, see where we end up. You, you never know until we start discussing it. We have had some heated discussions before about pieces, because somebody loves a piece or loves an artist, and the rest of us go, eh, not so much. Um, but we, you know, we discuss that openly, frankly, in public, and eventually we come up with some type of a solution. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Jim. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add that uh, we haven't covered? Yes. I would like, very briefly, like to give a personal endorsement of three of the individuals who will be before you today. One of them is Pam Price. Pam Price is also reapplying to the commission. She has been an arts commissioner for years now, giving great devoted service to, to our citizens on the art commission. She is an arts journalist for various publications, including being the arts editor for the Desert Star Weekly. She knows the arts extremely well, and she's very well connected to artists and people in the art scene, and that's very valuable to us. In fact, it's Pam Price who introduced us originally to Simi Daba, from whom we eventually got the most spectacular donation in our city's history of public art. So that initial introduction came through Pam. She's a valuable person on the commission, and I sincerely hope that she can remain on the commission. Another person that I would like to endorse is Sue Townsley. Sue Townsley is known uh, for having many years of experience in the arts. She's a member of the uh, Cathedral City Historical Society, and she's known by many organizations on, in our city as a tireless volunteer. She's the type who rolls up her sleeves and gets things done, and we need people on the commission who can work and not just warm a seat for two hours a month. And the last person I'd like to introduce, and I think this is, or, or endorse, and I think this is rather important since unfortunately it seems you don't have this application. And that is Mr. Colin Fisher. You're going to meet him a little later. You should know about Colin Fisher that he is an important, first of all, he doesn't live in Cathedral City. He lives directly across the street from Pam Price, but Pam Price is in Cathedral City and he's in Rancho Mirage. But what's key and important here is that Colin Fisher owns a very big and important business in our city. It's called the Colin, Colin Fisher Art Gallery. It's right over here on Perez Road. He does $1 million in business a year, okay? Think of all those tax dollars coming into the city coffers from his business. And it's all about art. He's universally known for his art. He brings in people from all over California for his art openings. He recently expanded his gallery here on Perez Road. He has five warehouses. He has five full-time employees. He has part-time employees. And he spends almost his entire waking life right here in Cathedral City. He recently even had people come from Paris, designers came from Paris to shop for his art. They stayed in a local Cathedral City hotel. He gave them recommendations of Cathedral City restaurants to eat in. They spent a lot of money here, and then they spent six figures on art in his gallery and shipped it back to Paris. Okay, he has an international presence. So he's a very important businessman here, and he's incredibly knowledgeable of the arts, and I think he'd be outstanding on the commission. So I hope you would also view uh, or consider the candidacies of these three individuals favorably. And that's it. Thank you. We appreciate uh, the work that you've done so far and Thank you. Uh, uh, you coming here this morning or uh, now this afternoon uh, to be here and interview. Thank you. You're very welcome and thank you gentlemen for lasting so long today. <laughs> I know it's been a long day for you. Thanks a lot. Now I go out, right? Correct? You, you can actually, you can stay. Oh, I can stay now because yes. I'm done. Yes. Thank you.